it says, and from among you and direct your heart to the Lord. Direct your heart to the Lord. The Hebrew word here is lev, and it's exactly what you think. It's that they understood it as the organ, but they saw the heart as the organ that controlled everything. It it was the control center for the entire person. So if you want to control someone or if you want to direct someone, you start with the heart. And what uh, Samuel is saying here is he, God doesn't want you to just uh, give him your right hand or maybe your left, right? With this hand, um, I'll, I'll reach out to God, but with this hand, I'll reach out to Baal. With this hand, I'll reach out to God, but with this hand, I'll reach out to my ambitions. With this hand, I'll reach out to God, but with this hand, I'll reach out to financial security. And what he's saying is, no, 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 no. Uh, God doesn't just want a hand because he knows you're, gonna, you're going to try to reach out to all these other appendages to also get this variety pack type of faith. So God wants your entire heart, the control center, the very, your very self. I think about the variety packs, and I think they still have them today. I've seen them on shelves, but man, variety pack cereals were the thing in the 80s. I loved a good variety pack because you have Cocoa Pebbles, right? And, and for a couple of days, Cocoa Pebbles is good, but then you don't really want to commit to that. You have a week of Cocoa Pebbles, and you're sick of it. But then a variety pack, I mean, one day it's Cocoa Pebbles, another day it's Honey Smacks, you know, and, and another day it's Alphabets. And then every once in a while you get Corn Flakes, which Corn Flakes is just the Monday of the work week. And so you have to have that, but no one really wants it. But then you can go on back to Honey Smacks and you can live this variety pack kind of life, which just reflects who we truly are as an American culture and really as human beings. We love to have this variety pack. And here's one of the problems in the variety pack that we tend to carry around. There's a box, there's a cereal, there's a God in that pack, and that God is me. As we look at all the different things we all try to reach to and try to uh, pick out and say, I'll have a little God and a little this, a little that, the one that we go after all the time for the American culture is the me God, me. And we think maybe I can split my time between serving God and serving me. But you miss out on so much. See, when you're trying to serve the the me God, then you become insecure. And and, and then everything is built around your self-interest. And, and everything turns into kind of a, a self-directed um, self and a self-loathing. And you're always focused on me, me, me. And God wants you to take your eyes off of yourself and direct it to him. We take our view from ourselves and we put them back on God. And that's what Samuel is asking. Here's the great thing about what Samuel is asking for Israel and what he's really asking for us. When we take our eyes off of the me God and try to serve the me God and put it back on God, then you see the fullness of God. See, so many of us are frustrated because we don't have this intimacy with God in the way we think. So many disciples of Jesus, including myself at times, just feel like, man, why can't I connect and have this uh, this intimate, open, and transparent relationship with God that it seems like everyone else in the Bible has? And the one thing I would challenge for you, as I challenge for myself, is when you take your eyes off of the me God and you put it on God, that's when you see him in this fullness. You can't just look at God from the peripheral. You can't see him in in his fullness in the peripheral. You can't look at God if there's a mirror in front of you looking at yourself. You have to put all those things away and turn your entire heart to God. And when we think about this series, we think about the difference between bad religion and true faith, that's what true faith invites us to do, is to cry out to God. And to put aside all those cultural norms and all those traditions and all the way we think we're supposed to do it because this is the way everyone else tells us to, to put it all away and it's you and God and you're reaching out to him and you are asking for him to save you. 